Welcome to Lesson 12, Connection, Part 2 of the SDS2 Getting Started series. We will continue now with adding connections in SDS2. Back on the connection input screen, we're going to take a look first at the auto standard connection. I'll begin by going into my fabricator options of setup. Let's come down to the standard fabricator connections and tear this off. First of all, let's look at the standard clip angle setup. As we can see, for a wide gauge, we have 5.5 inch center to center. Narrow gauge is 3.5. All the other data that pertains to it, the vertical edge distance, stagger holes, and supported and supporting. Now, let's go into the individual configuration. Let's go down and use this wide gauge bolted. Now, we can see for the different bolt diameters, we can see that we have different standard angle material attached a long leg to either supporting or supported as we covered in the part one connections where are you going to stagger the hole what is the gauge on leg to the supported member this would be the beam web and what the hole type is all this down here at the bottom is dealing with your uh, standard fabricator piece marks that may exist for the fabricators you work for Now let's move into the auto standard. I'm going to go to job options. Now you can see we have this auto standard connections. Now what happens here is the following. As we look here we can see that we have a wide flange beam going into a wide flange column which means that the condition is a beam to column condition. This is exactly what happens when we process. The system looks at this and says, oh, beam to column. Then we come down and we're looking at a wide flange to wide flange into flange perpendicular. This is called your scenarios. I'm going to go down here to a wide flange beam to a wide flange column flange perpendicular. Let's go ahead and select that. We get this little brief information telling us what this connection type is going to be. It's going to be uh, originally, it's going to start off as a clip angle, A325N, 3 quarters. The reason I say originally is because the system may change the connections due to certain conditions. That will be discussed further on. Let's go ahead and modify this a little bit more. I'm going to double click on top of that highlighted line of text. We have input connection type. Now I want you to notice this particular screen because what you see here on this screen is identical to what you see on the member edit screen. And this will be important when we go in and we start doing the input connection type. So I can select for these types of condition with this type of scenario what type of connection I want to use. Clip angle. Now currently it's using a wide gauge bolted as we can see here in this particular connection. Let's go ahead and change this to a wide gauge welded. Size, both attached to, safety connection, non-safety, and all the other data that pertains to this. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Hit OK one more time. Now, this was something that was mentioned in an earlier video talking about process. Whenever you make a setup change, you need to mark the entire structure for process. Because right now, according to the system, this member already believes that it's already gone through processing. It's done. So we need to resend it back in using that setup data. This is the reason why when people set their data, they get it right at the beginning. It doesn't mean that you can't change it during the way, but generally you're not going to want to. You're going to want to make sure that you get it right the first time around. So I'm going to go and mark this entire structure to go back through this processing routine. So let's go down here to member, mark all for process. I'm going to say yes, and then run my process. Now we can see that we actually have a welded connection. Now I want you to notice here that when we look at the wide flange to web, it's still using a bolted bolted connection. So what happens here is during process, the system goes through collecting the data and it says, hey, this is a wide flange beam going to a column. This is the condition, scenario, wide flange beam, wide flange column going to flange perpendicular. So in every case, you'll notice that it's going to be going to the flange, it's going to have a 
welded clip angle. This is the auto standard connection. Now we'll move on to the connection input type found in the member edit window. So now when I edit the member we're going to remove auto standard type and change this to a clip angle connection. I want to point out this connection type is the same thing that you saw in the auto standard connection. But instead of using a condition and scenario to apply this connection type, what is happening is I'm overriding that auto standard and I'm manually placing in the connection input type that I want to use. Again, I can modify the bolt type being used and diameter as well as various other fields. Now let's burrow down a little bit deeper. Remember when I saw that auto standard we saw the connection type but we also saw the connection specification. Here we can see that the system has the same thing where you have the gauge you can choose between wide and narrow gauge. I can go ahead and choose the attachment. I can come for this connection set it back to bolted. Side, bolt, attached to supported. All that other data that we saw earlier in that auto standard screen. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. It's going to prompt me because it detects there are four other members with the same uh, system piece mark. I'm going to say no because I'm just going to change this one member. And once I made that change in the member edit, unlike setup, when I make that change in the member edit for the different connection type, it automatically flags it or marks it to go back through the process routine for that member. So as I go back through process, the system will go ahead and change this to a bolted connection. It will also go ahead, remember it was B12, and it will also fix up that shipping mark accordingly. So when you go through that process, as mentioned in earlier videos, it goes through the shipping mark routine after it goes through the connection development and solid creation. We now see that we have a bolted bolt connection type. As mentioned earlier, for both the auto standard connection and the input connection type, everything is under control of the parameters that are set up within the system. If I go ahead and take a look at this design calculation, and in, and in this case, this will be the right end, we can see that the system has gone through. Here are my limit state designs. The connection is marked as OK. I want you to note above the limit state table that there is no data here. In our next major release of version 7.3, long form calculations will also be available. Now on to taking control away from the system and setting the connection to user. I'm going to change this connection type to an end plate. Run it back through process. Now with the user connection for example, if we take a look at this particular end plate designed by the system, the material thickness is a quarter inch. Now, of course, the starting value is in setup, and right now, by default, the starting value is a quarter inch. Again, that would be located underneath your setup, your fabricator options, standard fabricator connections, into your end plate setup. We're setting the minimum or starting thickness at a quarter inch. This, of course, will increase if you have an axial load on this member. Now I'm going to go in here and I could have changed that connection by changing my setup but we're going to demonstrate user. Right now as I come here in system as soon as I hit user I am now taking control away from the system. You'll notice that there's this little button here for this connection as you notice here for your clip angles as well. If this is set at system and I go ahead and select this little button You'll see that we have all the values for plate depth, width, and so forth are all listed right here. I am unable to make any effect or any changes on these until I take control away from the system. As soon as I go ahead and hit this switch, we're going to notice that when I get to my calculation, there will be a note here. It will no longer say that the connection passes but it'll say user design connection engineer review required even if I haven't made any changes to these values yet because once the user is in control we can do anything here. So how do we know what each of these values means? As descriptive as we can be a picture is worth a thousand words. 
I'm going to go to my help and in help I'm going to select the revise and review and this is going to be a non-moment end plate. Now what this allows me to do is I can have this picture over here on the side indicating what each of these values is going to do. So for example I can see what plate depth is and vertical hole and top of plate and all that data that pertains to this particular connection. Then you can bookmark these for quick reference next time you're editing a screen. I'm going to come in here and change this to a half inch plate. Run it back through process and we can see that this is actually a half inch plate being used on a particular connection type. Now let's take a look at that design calculation. We're going to go to the right end of this member. Now you'll notice there's no longer a note stating that this is a um, OK connection that has passed. You'll also notice under or on top of these uh, limit state table this note that I mentioned user connection engineer review required to evaluate the strength of the application. Now as you notice we are doing some evaluation but again as it says it's up to the engineer to evaluate whether the right ones are applied. So for example as I look at this connection right here I can say well you know this is good for 61 kips on this particular member. Well at least from those connections that we see right now we can see that it's good for 61 kips but what happens when you're set in user if I go into my preps on this particular member and let's go in here and just put a little cope on the top I'm gonna to go ahead and put the length of 6 inches and a depth of 18 inches again it's in user control we can now see that this is really not a very good looking connection. Let's go ahead and take a look at the design calculations. Once you go into this user stage, the system is not going to tell you whether this thing has failed or passed. It will offer some data here, but again, right here it is up to the user who is in control for this particular connection. Now you'll see the well supporting member is still 61. That's because the system doesn't know that here's the weld we're assuming the weld is going to be the length of the plate. Bad assumption. Okay, let's go back in here and change this connection back to system. Go ahead and hit OK and run it back through process. Now when we look at that design calculation, we'll see that the connection is OK and again no more message on top about engineer review being required.